So I was guest preaching at a church a few years ago, and I told this story that I, uh, I had recently been driving. And I don't look into other people's cars when I drive. It's like my little world. You know, you can have your, your little world, you know. I talk to myself. Now you can all think I'm talking on the phone, which is a hoo-hoo-hoo, right, for me. But I, I literally don't. So I'm sure I, I grew up on Long Island, and I uh, now live in New Jersey. And I am sure that somebody has gotten irritated enough at my driving other times where I might have, there, there might have been some kind of gesture in my direction. But only, but, but this is the one time that I was sure, this was a few years ago, I made a right out onto Newton Sparta Road and I look behind me and this big pickup truck, this big red pickup truck was right on my tail. And this man leaned forward so that his arm could be on the other side of the steering wheel on the dashboard one finger was going in that direction and the rest were going in the other direction and this is like the first time i've ever seen anybody do that and i was a little little startled and so of course you know and i'm you know and i didn't think at that point that doing the little wave thing was gonna was gonna appease anything so but we get up to the to the light right so you know, he's right behind me but he he pulls off into the parking lot to the side and he did one of those slow drives you know when you're looking to see who the idiot is in the car you know and and i'm sitting there trying to figure out do i do like the peace sign i'm, I'm a trekkie so i'm like live long and proper prosper you know but in but in in all i can think of like i wish i knew sign language for i think you're overreacting right but here's but here's the thing after i told this story in worship, this woman came to me to tell me her story. She had, she's from New Jersey, and she was down, I think it was Kentucky. And she was, she did a jerky driving move. She, move. she, she didn't know where she was, and suddenly she realized that she had passed what she wanted. So she went from the right lane to go across another lane and do a U-turn, and she cut some guy off. And... And so, you know, so she knew she was in the wrong, and she looked at the driver, and the, and the guy just gave her the peace sign. And she's like, gosh, she's like, I was so st struck by that, because, and she goes, because, you know, I'm, I'm a Jersey girl, I know what I would have done. <laughs> and so, again, little, you know, little Miss Pollyanna here was just like, we don't do that, right? As, as Christians, right, we're not... We're not flipping the bird to anybody, right? We don't, we don't get to do that because that, that's like wishing somebody violence, right? Huh. So I need to tell you my transformation, being really honest, you know, uh, in terms of, and I know that some people are just, you know, you all just want, you're, you're probably happy that you're wearing masks, right? You know, when, when I say that or looking down. But I, my, my transformation in this is that I, I would never, I'm also very afraid of road rage, so I will never, ever gesticulate at anybody for fear that they'll come after me, right? But I have moved to the point of where I'm, how honest can I be, all right? All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brave that I used to maybe, maybe a finger might have gone down while I'm holding the this, this steering wheel, and I might have said something at that person that only I could hear. And then I would go, okay, Lord, and then I would pray. I have moved, God is good, to the place where I go right into the prayer now. All right, okay, this is where, all right, yay, little star next to my name. I talked to a friend on the phone uh, on my ride home from work on, on Thursdays, and she heard me like uh, gasp or something and, and, then, and then audibly go, okay, dear Lord, be with that person. I pray that they get to where they need to be and they don't kill anybody on the way. And I just, you know, what, what, whether they're going to the hospital or they have a, an important meeting, I pray that it's successful. I pray blessings on that person, you know. And my friend, who's also a pastor, she's like, man, you're good. <laughs> and I said, that's been a long time coming to, to get to that place. 
And I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote Norma on this. She said this the, the other night at the session meeting. She said uh, that Jesus breaks the power of sin in our lives. It's our job to break the habit of it. And I share that story to say that, you know, we don't all, we, we've got Jesus, we don't instantly arrive, but we can train ourselves to get to that place where, we, you know, and, and, you know, and so I just, you know, I don't, it's, it's always awkward when you, when you share a story where you're like, hey, look how far I've come, look at me. And that's not how I share it. It's, it's, I didn't start there, didn't start there. You know, and all you Jersey folks, I'm from Long Island. You know, we, you know, I, I come from the people with, we say it, right? To, to the place where, you know, I, I really do, you know, can wish blessings on people. Uh, we, the world that we're living in right now, the anxiety is really high. And there's been articles about how people's driving has gotten worse uh, in, in recent years. When anxiety is high, we are not at our best. And people are not being thoughtful. They're not pausing to think how I should respond. They're just responding. This text asks us to be thoughtful you know, uh, in how we respond to other people's, like th their reactions. And it's doable through the power of the Holy Spirit. So we need to sit and, and read and wrestle and be transformed by Matthew 5, verses 38 to 48. And, and I, in, in this day and age, I think I shared last week that, uh, that Gandhi would read the Beatitudes every morning. You know, blessed are, blessed are, blessed are, which I think is beautiful. I think at night we should keep you know, a little note card by our bed that says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Uh, and years ago, I read this test. Enemies? Who has enemies? Who? You know, I don't have any enemies. But in recent years, not not that not that I do, but I have been so surprised by the vitriol. And and in churches be, uh, that I've served or I guest preaching or whatever, I will say, you need to remember that there are people in these pews, and this is true here, who voted for the other person because of their faith. And your faith may have led you to, uh, to vote for the other person. And so, and, but we're not having the conversations to try to understand one another. Right? And, and we are talking about people on Monday without, without recognizing that we're sitting down from the pew from those folks on Sunday. Somebody that I grew up, grew up with, who I know and love, I posted something on, on Facebook, it was political, and he responded to it in a very negative way. And I, and, and I was told by my friend, oh God, we would walk through fire for each other, I know it. But, but, he, but I was told that I was part of the problem. And you know, how, how often have you heard that? You know, if you think that you are part of the problem, you're the problem. And I didn't respond, but and, and you know, in my head, I'm just like, okay, I'm trying to listen and understand and respond to people in love. If that makes me part of the problem, I'm not. You know, we need to sit with this text, and and my friend is a Christian, and you know, and Christians, we need to do this work, and help model it for other people. So Jesus is always flipping the world on its ear. Our response to hatred is love. He says, you have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That teaching is from Leviticus, and it was actually a teaching so that um, you wouldn't respond to some bad thing with even worse, because we do that, right? And anybody who has a sibling understands this, if you're an only child, right? But if you had a sibling, one gets hit. What does the other one do? hits back, right? But what does the first person, what does the first kid say? I didn't hit you that hard, right? And so then it comes back even harder and it can turn into a big thing, unless you're me, because after the second hit, I run and tell mom and dad, just that's, that's my modus operandi. And since so she was bigger than me, ha ha ha, right? So she always got in trouble. But 
But this eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth was actually, you know, it was supposed to level the playing field. You know, like if this happened, the retribution is that. There's a Latin term for it. It's called lex talionis, literally the law of such like, versus lex vindictae, which means the law of vengeance. And then, of course, Jesus gives us lex gratia, the law of grace. Again, Gandhi said, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Jesus goes on to say, if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, offer them the left. Now, this, people hear this like, what, are we supposed to be punching bags? Are we supposed to be doormats? That's not what's being said. A theologian, Walter Wink, did a lot of, uh, did, unpacked this passage in a beautiful way. In the biblical world, uh, it's a right-hand-dominant right hand dominant world. Yeah. In that world, you know, scripture, if you're left-handed, you're weird, stop it. Right? So right hand dominant. To hit somebody on uh, the right cheek, all right, so you have to visualize this. So if you're right handed and you go to hit somebody with a fist, you're hitting them on the left cheek. Right? Or open fist, or open hand, slap, it would be on the left cheek. Right? To be hit on the right cheek means it would be a backhand slap which we are to infer from that that there's a difference in power there. Because this puts somebody, that backhand slap puts somebody in their place. Right? It's humiliating. In biblical times, it, was, it would be what a, how a master hits a slave, and a husband hits a wife, a parent hits a child, a Roman hits a Jew with the back of the hand. And what Wink points out there to say, if somebody hits you, if somebody strikes you on your right cheek, offer them the left, which is to say, if you're going to hit me you were gonna, and we're going to fight, it's going to be as equals. It's with a fist, not with this backhand thing, which is a really, really interesting take on that, right? It's, you know, it's, it's turning the power dynamic on its head. You are gonna, you know, I am not going to be humiliated by you. If you're gonna hit me, you're gonna hit me as an equal. Goes on to say, if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. So if the only thing somebody has that you can sue them for if they owe you money is their cloak, you are taking away from them what they have to protect them against the elements. It's what they use as a as a blanket at night. Are you going to take everything away from a person? So Jesus says, if they take your cloak, take your cloak, give your coat as well. The coat would leave the person. It's like it's you know, it's like the you know, like your dress or your or whatever. So you're naked. You're basically and in in the ancient world, uh, if to make somebody naked, the shame is on you. To see somebody else's nakedness, the shame is on you. It's not on the person who is naked. So if somebody is cruel enough to sue you for, the, for your cloak, just give them your shirt too. And then, again, the power dynamic has changed. It's reversed. You sought to humiliate me, and look. Jesus is doing some clever stuff here. Next one. You want to sue me for... Um, no, okay. Next one, if anyone forces you to go a mile, go also a second mile. So in the Roman world, they actually had mile markers on the road, which I think is really, really cool. But the, uh, the Roman soldiers, it was law, they could ask anybody to carry their armor, carry their equipment, but only for one mile. Anything beyond that was against the law and they could get in trouble. So imagine that. Jesus says, if anyone forces you to go to a mile, go a second mile. See what happens, right? So you can see the Roman soldier, hey, you, carry this for me. Okay, carrying it for a mile. And then at the end of the mile, all right, you can give it back. Uh, no, that's okay, I'll, I'll, I'll keep carrying it. No, no, that's okay, I'll, I'll take it. No, I'm good. 
But I could get in trouble. Oh, really? Again, it changes the power dynamic. It goes from the person, you know, using their position to, to exploit somebody to suddenly being on the defensive. These are all examples of nonviolent resistance to unfair power dynamics. Respond to your enemy with grace, but resist in a way that makes it clear who the abuser is. So Jesus is not saying, hey, play the victim, be a doormat, let people run all over you. But Wink would say that Jesus is, pr is promoting resisting the powers that be in a nonviolent way. You have heard it said, you shall love your enemy, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That's nowhere in scripture. It's not in the Old Testament. But it doesn't mean that people didn't hate. And we see that people can, you know, and this is a question in the New, in the New Testament. How, you know, who's my neighbor again? Leviticus 19, verse 18, neighbor likely means your fellow Israelite. But if you keep reading Leviticus 19, 34, you shall love the foreigner as yourself, for you were foreigners in the land of Egypt. So Jesus, in his teaching, picks up on this and makes it even more expansive. Love your enemy as yourself. Uh, human nature wants to, you know, it's, you know who, do I, who do I have to love? My family? Yeah, even expand the, expand the circle. People who think like me? My political party? My ethnic group? My nation? And God says, yes, 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 yes. Jesus would call us out on all the ways that we want to, to narrow who we have to care for and love. The, uh, there's so many fun memes, on, but this, this isn't even a meme, this is a real thing. There's these misguided people for whom we have to pray on the street corner with these signs that says, you know, God hates fags, right? And there's this guy dressed up like Jesus, you know, puts on a long, puts on a wig with long hair and the robe with the sign, I'm not with these people, right? And you see these policemen off to the side just smiling, you know, just, you know, and how to disarm, how to disarm, right? Every child on, on the planet is a child of God. I've gone to trainings in recent years where where it, it's working on the same way King, you know, worked on nonviolent resistance with people. Like, if you get hit, do not hit back, right? In the same way, it, being taught you have to love the person on the other side of the picket line. Because once you hate, you become a hater, right? You have to love them, to be praying for them, to be, and that's the only way out of this mess. That's the only way out of this ugliness. And I, be I believe we can do it with the Spirit's help. Gosh, we have to. If you need to put Matthew 5, 38 to 48 next to your bedstand to make it your mantra, when you find hate you know, getting up here, Make it your mantra, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And remember, at the end of Matthew, Jesus says, I am with you always. Because it, it's not like this. It's work. It's, it's learning to hit pause. It's learning to be thoughtful. It's learning to not react Eventually, you know, little kids that arm, you, boom, right? Eventually, you teach yourself to use your words. I hope. God will work in us, especially if we're asking to be transformed. We are called to celebrate God's grace, to live in that grace, and to respond in grace. To aspire to be like Christ. That passage ends, you know, that's all... Uh, be perfect as, as God is perfect, it, it means aspire to be like Jesus. It's not easy. 
It's not easy, this call. But it's necessary. And God will equip us to be lovers, which is never easy. In Jesus' name, may it be so. Amen.